Today we're going to sharpen one of the strangest knives I think I've ever seen. This is the Heli Nying. I hadn't even heard of this knife before, before it arrived in the package, and it really <laughs> caught me off guard when I pulled it out of the package because it's just such a strange knife. So it's the Heli Nying. I'm not sure why I haven't heard of it. I did some research on it after, and it turns out actually a pretty popular knife. Isn't that a strange shape? Uh, the guy that sent it to me, the customer that sent it to me for sharpening, just bought it used, has some damage to it. Let's take a look. I'm going to show you a big no-no when it comes to sharpening knives. So just to give you a quick look at this cool little piece. Again, it's a heli, your standard sheath, and something cool that heli does is this button on the end of the handle. It's an interesting way to retain your blade, and it's quite effective. Okay. So again, looking at the knife, the I think it's the huge handle that kind of catches you off guard. And I'm not a big fan of big handles at all. But I couldn't believe when I, when I put this thing in my hand, it just feels perfect. It's just got a perfect shape, just fits your hand perfectly. Uh, kind of strange that this is not rounded off here. I'm not sure why you've got that sharp, sharp end and your hand does go out over a little bit as you can see it's more of a three finger knife I guess like that and it's pretty comfortable as for the damage can you see those striations going lengthways down the blade that was most likely done by a flash of picture there now one of these tools you see on the screen, one of those carbide scraper tools, which is one of the, in my opinion, one of the worst things ever invented for sharpening knives. They're just ruination for good steel, and I recommend you never use them. There are so many other ways to quickly touch up an edge. I get that some people's argument is, well, it's fast for if you're in the middle of skinning a moose, for example, it doesn't take any time to just rub over the blade, but there are so many better options that maybe I'll cover at some point on the channel. Quick in the woods options, but stay away from those types of scraper sharpeners. You see you've got big scores along the, the, the length of the blade there where someone tried to sharpen this nice little scanty knife definitely not the right way to do it. We're going to use our skills we learned last day with some sandpaper here in the Mora video. If you haven't seen that one, go check it out. We're going to use some of those techniques and I think I'm going to use some whetstones today to bring this Scandi back better than it was when new. So we're starting off with the exact same piece of sandpaper we used in the last video, in the Mora video. So it's a bit worn, it's not going to be quite as grabby now, which is just fine. Lay your knife perfectly flat on the Scandi. Remember, you want your sandpaper stuck to a nice flat surface. So just you just saw me make those couple strokes. Let's see if I can show you here. Look already how I'm starting to find a nice scratch pattern here, okay? So with some good sandpaper, it doesn't take long. So you need to make sure you keep that angle perfect. It's just one or two strokes out of angle, and you will have convexed your Scandi grind. This knife also has some, uh, I don't know if you noticed when I was showing you the close-up, has some bad little nicks in it up around the tip of the knife see right around here got some bad little chips and nicks so we'll remove those and you can see the scratch pattern we're starting to get here now it's just nice I yeah, just finished up with the sandpaper that was uh, the medium emery cloth with uh, which I estimate to be around 60 grit then I went on to some 100 grit paper and now I'm switching over to stones so this, uh, this heli steel is actually quite hard. Uh, it was quite a bit of work to file away enough steel where I got rid of that reflective edge. Uh, I worked pretty hard at it. Worked pretty hard at it, but now it's looking lovely. You got those nice, a uh, nice uniform edge there. Um, it's also one of those cases where the more I filed away at it, 
the more issues I found. Uh, because the knife was a bit dirty and the edge was dirty and mixy, you couldn't see some, some little chips and gouges and stuff. So it took a while before I got everything out. I kept on covering new things. Now I'm going to start off on my stones. So here's the part where you hope your sandpaper was pretty flat. So when you go over to your nice flat stones now, you want them to be able to sit nice and flat on the stone and have no wobble or, or places where you can't get to with the stone. There's nothing like a nice quality set of stones. Here I have three simple stones. Uh, these are not necessary, I'm going to say it right now, but we have a 400 grit Nanawa. This is a 3000 grit Nanawa. This is the Woodstock uh, 1000 6000 combo. And then I've just got a 600 grit Nagura hair, which I found really helpful and I'm really enjoying. I'm going to start off in the 400 grit Nanawa first. And let's see it work. I also recently got this Nanawa stone holder, which I've never had. I always considered it fairly useless. And uh, why would you need a stone holder? But I tell you, I, I splurged a little bit, uh, maybe a month ago. Picked one up to try it out. And I can't believe I ever went so long without one. It is just so handy, and, it, and the, the, the most I like about it is that when you're sharpening, it raises your stone way up, so you have room for your, your hands, your knuckles down on the side of the stone here. So I really like that. It's got those nice rubber feet, so your stone is not sliding around. It's just really cool. If you're like me, and you just really enjoy wet stone sharpening, it just adds that extra bit of joy. If you're just sharpening purely for utility purposes, eh, it's not necessary, not at all. But, like I said, it does add a little bit of fun to the process. Just doing the last few strokes here now. I drew my edge through a piece of wood and now the last few strokes are into the edge no stropping strokes. I don't want to pull any burr. I want to remove any burr. So what's left is a nice hard crisp edge. Make sure I'm trailing all the way to the tip. This is a fantastic stone. If you're looking for a good stone, maybe 400 is not necessary if you're not doing much heavy work. But because I sharpen knives for other people means I'm doing a lot of sharpening and I don't want to spend a ton of time at it. If you're looking for just a good single stone, maybe start around 800 or 1000 grit because that's you can finish with that. That's a good enough edge to keep really. So from that 400 going over here to 1000 this 1000 is a really fast cutting stone and it's also a really hard stone, much harder than uh, some of the other stones, other brand stones for the same grit. So you can work it pretty hard, which I'm doing here now, to try to save some time, keeping a watch on my angle, make sure I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Just going to remove all those 400 grit scratches. That's always uh, the name of the game. Okay, down on that 1000, I'll put it back in the soak because I need the 6000 later. Now, out with my 3000. Now, I've often gone right from 1000 to 6000. This 3000 is a new. Uh, new stone I recently got and I want to use it because I really enjoy it. Just to give you a look here, here's that 1000 grit. And 1000 is actually a great grit to keep your knife at. It's a great working grit. Easily maintainable. This 3000 grit also exceptional. 
6000 grit gives you a really smooth edge. You have to decide if that's what you want or not. You can see how quickly the black builds up on the surface of this stone, so give you an idea of how quickly it's cutting. And last few strokes on the 3000 grit. I love when a stone gets a good workout and you when you're finishing up you have all that black on there. Doesn't that look nice? Looks like you've really done something. Last few strokes I'll just clean up some of that mess there now just so the stone has less of a slurry. So it cuts a little slower and it's a little finer. Just a few singles. Sticking with the flat. Okay, that ought to do for a 3000 grit. There it is. This is a real keen edge there now. It'll really bite. Off to 6000 grit. Now is when you'll really see a polish start to emerge. Just finishing up on that 6000 grit stone. I'm just going to draw through a piece of wood a couple times here out of frame, very lightly. Now I can feel that edge is super keen, really sharp. It's a little thin, and this is kind of at my discretion, but as a neck knife, I'm thinking it's going to be used for a lot of utility chores. So it's probably going to get run through the mill. It's going to do a lot of tougher tasks other than just a bit of softwood whittling or something. So what I'm going to do is put a tiny, tiny micro bevel. So how I do that, let me just turn to the other side so you can see. I'll lay, my, lay the knife on its flat, turn up to the scandy, and then increase a little bit. So here's the scandy. And here's the increase, and I'll just draw lightly the entire length of the edge. And I'll do that two or three times per side. And then I'll look at my micro bevel and see what it looks like. So, same drills you're used to. First on the compounded strap, and then the next frame will be my finished strap. I'm not increasing the angle even though this is fastened to a piece of wood it'll still round my bike micro bevel because this is a rough piece of leather okay that's another awesome knife for the books the heli nying let's give you a look here mmm that is nice Nothing like a fresh mirror edge, I tell you. Compare that to that rough edge that we started with, if you were on a run back, all beat up and scraped up. This is just gorgeous, and it took a crazy edge. Just to touch the hairs, they just fly away. Just look that beautiful knife. Nice handle too, feels great in the hand. You bought this knife used and now it's better than new. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you liked the video. Remember slight micro bevel on there now just to toughen it up a little bit. It's a great knife. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Comment down below. Hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. See you in the next one.